You are listening to TBR Radio Presents, The Dixie Heritage Show, with your host, the director of Dixie Heritage, Dr. Ed DeVries. On my trips to Cuba, there's a group of pastors that I work with, a network of churches, and uh, they help us to operate our Bible college there in Havana, and uh, they help us with our church planning efforts there in the nation of Cuba. And it's always a joy for me to be with them, but this past week I had the joy of having one of them with me, and that was a first for one of them to be able to come to the United States. And so it was a joy to be his host. And what I want to share with you on today's TBR Radio Presents the Dixie Heritage Show is his testimony. He was speaking in our Wednesday evening church service about what's going on in Cuba right now with the protests and with the things that are happening in that nation right now. And so it's about a six a minute, I guess, testimony maybe. And so I'm going to share that with you. And then we'll have a quick commercial from our friends over at TBR Magazine, the Barnes Review. And then we'll have a message that I preached, again, about six minutes. Just a short message that I preached after the testimony. And then we'll have a word from the American Free Press. And then we'll be back with more of TBR Radio Presents, The Dixie Heritage Show. Open your web browser and type in www.barnesreview.org and discover the Barnes Review magazine. In the Barnes Review, you will read vignettes of man, from the prehistoric to the very recent, from forgotten races and civilizations to first-person accounts of World War II and the late Cold War. There is no more interesting magazine published today, nor a more significant and important subject than real history. So visit www.barnesreview.org and subscribe to the Barnes Review. You can subscribe to receive the Barnes Review magazine in its print form, or in convenient electronic delivery. Our host has been a subscriber to both formats for years. So visit www.barnesreview.org and subscribe to the Barnes Review. Communist country, that means that everything that you can imagine is controlled by the government. Communism is a regime that uh, tries to get into your into your, I mean, gets into your jobs, into your daily life, lives, into your church. They want to get into your house. They want to get into your bed, into your kitchen, <laughs> into your plates, whatever you eat, whatever you dress, or you celebrate, whether you can meet or not at church. They want to control all of that. Um, and the, the, the church was like pretty much disappeared for the first like 30 years of the revolution. But then in the 90s, uh, it was related to the fall of the Soviet Union. So Cuba was experiencing similar things that we are experiencing now. So like the, the communist uh, Cuba all of a sudden was left without any support. Those people started to go also to the street because they were hungry and all of that. But people then started to meet Jesus. So now it's like after 30 years, we are in a pretty similar situation. And now the people are rioting on the street. People are like fighting. They are claiming for liberty, for freedom. And but we, we really pray that this is gonna be another breakthrough, another generational breakthrough, and that the people will will meet Jesus. So in the middle of all of that, we have been working with youth at the churches. We have been like training youth to to go in, in, into missions. In Cuba, you cannot get a plane and. And go to somewhere else to do missions, but you can go into the areas of society. You can go, you can take what you, the, in whatever you are uh, studying at university, you can get to the place where you are working and you can not only preach the, the, the salvation measures, but you can also like try to live and try to teach the implication of being a Christian, the implication of God, the gospel in our country. So that's what we try to do. Um, to teach people how to live on a daily basis, based it in the Bible. Um, how do you, you know, how do you, how, how do you do art in, in from a biblical perspective? How how are you a lawyer in a biblical perspective? How do you do business, even when it's so limited in Cuba, in a biblical perspective? So that's that's the thing that we we try to encourage, and particularly me and my wife, we have a an underground magazine that we started when we were when I was in university, so we distributed. Uh, for free, we give it away. In Cuba, it's illegal to have a 
a magazine or whatever publication, so we have to do it carefully. Mm -hmm. And then, as, as Edward said, we also have uh, an art festival that we do, so we encourage like youth to come, and we have like visual arts, music, many things going on. And this last year was pretty good. We managed to do it right before the pandemic and everything closed. So we, we ended our festival, and like, a few days later, everything was closed because of the pandemic. And ever since the situation in Cuba has gotten uh, harder, not only because of the pandemic, because the system is really has been really collapsing every like since two three years ago, uh, because it's related to the collapsing of Venezuela. So yeah, now it's uh, it's very risky to do whatever activity because the the ones who are leading the uh, the movement, the opposition movement now are the same artists and intellectuals that we are reaching with our magazine and with our art festival. So we are very related to them and in a way we could be targeted because of all of it that is happening. So yeah. Uh, I'm I'm at the same time excited and worried about my country and about my family. I'm worried because my wife is there with my kids. Um, uh, she's not going out at the street because it's a bit hard. Um, his house, just so you know, his apartment is within walking distance of the Capitol building where all the protests are going. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. No, and even downstairs, the protesters got into my co the corner of my street. We live downtown Havana, right? so it was really like there, and they could hear the noise. And even my wife said she she recorded some stuff. She, but at the same time, I'm worried. But at the yeah. same time, I'm excited, I'm excited for the change of that because I'm I'm, I'm I'm uh, confident that this is something that God is doing because nobody organized this. It just started Sunday, many places at the same time, no organizers, nobody can claim the glory. It will be like real, like a movement of the spirit, even with those that you know. Pray for Cuba because this is a, it's a very defining moment. Things can, can change in Cuba. Yeah. And I hope I'm here. I know I'm here for it. If you're like me, and I'll bet you are, you like to be on the cutting edge of honest news and accurate information. You like to hear about the latest financial trends and to know what's happening around the world and right here in the United States. The things that can directly impact you, your life, and the life of your family. And if you're like me, you do not rely on the mainstream media to obtain this information because, frankly, you know that you just can't trust them. Fortunately, there is an alternative news outlet with a long-established track record for honesty and integrity, and that is the American Free Press. AFP is the preeminent alternative independent news source for honest, hard-working, truth-loving Americans. AFP is the antithesis of the controlled, lamestream media. AFP is employee-owned and has been so since its founding. Because of that, AFP never has and never will allow advertisers or special interests or big money to dictate what appears in the pages of the American Free Press newspaper. 26 times a year, the American Free Press newspaper can be delivered to your door, packed with the kind of uncensored news that I know you're going to appreciate. AFP covers the stories and tells the truth that the lamestream media is frankly scared to touch. And AFP offers real, on-the-scene reporting and commentary, the likes of which you will never see in the Washington Post, the New York Times, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, or just about any other lamestream news source that you can think of. That's right. There's only one national populist news weekly staffed by an unsurpassed team of veteran investigative journalists who will dare to rip the veil off of many of the major news stories that are being censored and suppressed by the big-money-controlled media monopoly. And that's the American Free Press. AFP publishes exciting, in-depth, uncensored news and information that's grassroots and patriotic, information that Americans need to know in order to combat the growing police state. AFP stands firmly against the New World Order, and against those who are working to establish a global plantation under the rule of a powerful few. In short, AFP is your voice. If you have any doubt why they want to silence AFP, you must be relying on the lamestream media for your news. And folks, that's a big mistake. 
If you're ever dissatisfied with your subscription to the American Free Press, their guarantee is that you just drop them an email and they will gladly refund the unused portion of your subscription. So what are you waiting for? Visit www.americanfreepress.net. Once again, www.americanfreepress.net. And find out about the American Free Press. Do it today. Chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 28. It came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. I might have used this illustration before, so somebody may have heard it and remember it from a previous message. But a number of years ago, I was playing in the USSSA, which was a men's professional softball league. And the umpire made a call that just outraged our manager. Just so happened the manager was also my dad. But, my, but he didn't agree with the umpire's interpretation of a specific rule. So a very heated discussion ensues. And finally, the umpire sighs and he pulls a rule book out of his back pocket. And he proceeds to read the rule, citing the page and the paragraph. And he looks at my dad and he says, as you can clearly see, the rule means that my call stands. My dad looks at him and says, but you're not interpreting that rule correctly. To which the umpire replied, excuse me, sir, I think I should know what I'm talking about. I wrote the rule book. And there was an awkward silence. And my dad just turns around. And he walks back to the dugout and he's shaking his head and, he's, and he stops and he points at the umpire and he looks up at the folks up in the stands and he says, he wrote the expletive, expletive, expletive rule book. Throughout his ministry, Jesus didn't just affirm or endorse the words of scripture, but he talked and acted like he had authored the scriptures. Jesus could speak with authority that the others couldn't speak and preach with. Because Jesus actually wrote the rule book. And so last week we looked at the head of Jesus, the literal head of Jesus. Today I want to talk about the headship of Jesus. Jesus, who's the head of the man. Jesus, who's the head of the church. Jesus, who was the head of his creation. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 11, the Bible says, This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. And so Jesus is the head of the corner. He is the chief cornerstone. Jesus is the head of every man in 1 Corinthians 11.3. The apostle said this in 1 Corinthians 11.3. He said, I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ and that the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. And so there's a pecking order to society. The head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man. And then Christ has a head and God is the head of Christ, or the Father is the head of the Son. You wonder why sometimes I take the positions that I do on certain things, for example. The man is the head of the woman, and Christ is the head of the man, and God is the head of Christ. The problem with the whole family court system in America is that the judge puts himself in the place of Christ. And you say, so why do you oppose those things? You know, you're getting political. No, I'm getting scriptural. I'm getting scriptural because Christ is the head of the man and God is the head of Christ. And so God has given a divine order. We don't get our authority in our family from a judge or from a court or from the state. Christ is the head. The same is true of the church in Ephesians 5.23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. And so Christ is the head of the church. The Bible says that he's the head of the church in all things. That doesn't mean some things. That means all things. So if Christ is the head of the church in all things, then the government can be the head of the church in no things. You know, we, we dealt with this even <clears throat> back before. You know, governor didn't have the authority to close the church. Why? Because he's not the head of the church. Jesus is. Jesus is the head of the church in all things. So the state is the head of the church in nothing. And we can't take that which belongs to Christ. You know, the Bible says, render unto 
Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God's the things that are God's, but the church is, is God's. You can't render it to Caesar. Well, you can, but you have to rob God to do so. Would a man rob God? That's what the prophet asked in the book of Malachi. So he's the head of the man. He's the head of the church. He's the head of all principality and power in Colossians 2 and verse 10. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. You say, well, what is principality and power? He's the head of all the government. He's the head of all the ruling authorities. He is the head of all of the banking institutions. He is the head of all of the, the, the money power in the world, if you will. All of the power and influence. He is the head of it. You say, well, what gives him that authority? He created it. He is the creator. And as the creator, he's the head of his creation. Jesus is the head of administration in Ephesians 4.15. The apostle says, speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. He's just the head over all things. Ephesians 1 and verse 22. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So God has just put everything under his feet. He's the ruler of everything. There is, is nothing that he is not the ruler of. Except for one person. And that's God the Father. Again, in 1 Corinthians eleven three, 3, that the head of every man is Christ, the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. And so God is the head of Christ, and Christ is the head of everyone and everything else. He could speak with authority because he had all power in heaven and earth. And so, Father, I thank you for the Lord Jesus, who is our head, the head of our church, who is the head of our lives, who is the head of everything. Pray that we would submit to him. As we talked earlier about submitting our lives, pray that we would submit to he who is our head. Pray. I've got on the phone with me today Dr. William Von Peters. And Dr. Von Peters has, has been uh, my doctor for the last, I guess, about 10 years now. And Dr. Von Peters, I was complaining about knee pain here a few weeks ago. And you gave me some stuff that you called knee formula. And I just have to say that the knee pain has subsided. My son was complaining of knee pain because being a baseball catcher, he, all the squatting, uh, his knee was making noises it shouldn't have made. I'll just put it that way. And so I started sharing it with him, and he has said that uh, he feels a lot better now. So tell us about the knee pain, and tell us why our pain is going away. Well, actually, the the product is a, a homeopathic uh, formula that I developed originally because my wife had knee pain, and so she was complaining about it. And so I sat down, did the research, put the formula together, and so she was uh, kind of the guinea pig on the thing for that was for her. What it basically does is designed both to deal with uh, pain in the knees. Uh, as well as dealing with uh, swelling uh, of the uh, tissues around the knee, you know, where you get the water on the knee and that kind of thing. It's also very effective in, in taking uh, water from throughout the body, as well as uh, such around the ankles. The caveat on it is that if a woman is breastfeeding, she should not take it because it will actually dry up her milk because it's that effective. It'll pull the uh, uh, water out of her out of her breast, so the milk dries up. Other than that, it's uh, there is no caveats on it on on uh, or problems, counterindications, or anything like that. It's just a, a, a homeopathic electropotency designed to for the knees to, uh, as I said, to deal with both pain and the swelling. So I want to ask you one more question because. I was always under the impression that having water around your joints had a cushioning effect and was a good thing, but yet I guess you could say the science or the thinking behind your product is doing the exact opposite. Well, you want some, obviously you need some uh, fluid in your knees and whatnot because there are, that's 
it should be there. The problem, of course, is that uh, when they begin to swell, the tissues begin to swell around it and so forth, you're getting excess uh, uh, fluid that has to be uh, taken off. That's why the many times if, if uh, someone goes to the MD, they'll actually try and drain that fluid off the knee. And so tell us, how does someone who's listening to us today, how do they get their own? Ah, yes. The, the website is www.lifequest, Q-U-E-S-T, formulas, plural, uh, dot com. LifeQuestFormulas.com, and just look up knee formula, and it's, uh, we'll get it shipped out to you. All right. Well, I definitely want to encourage all of our listeners to try the knee formula because I've tried it myself, and I can be a firsthand testimonial that it works. www.LifeQuestFormulas.com <music> Hopefully this gives you kind of a perspective of what's going on in Cuba just a little bit from uh, someone who's actually from Cuba. You know, you talk to the Cuban folks down in Miami, down in Tampa, and it's not that they don't have an interest in what's going on in Cuba, but their perspective is totally different from the perspective of those who are actually living in Cuba. In fact, it was funny. I was... uh, I was telling my Cuban friend the other day, and he laughed, and he told me that I'm probably very, very uh, observant in saying this, that the Cuban people and the Cuban nation shouldn't fear whoever the president of the United States is. They should fear the Marco Rubios. I think some, perhaps the greatest enemy to the Cuban people and the Cuban nation are some of the Cubans who are here in the United States. But that's a political commentary I don't want to go too deep into right now. For the next few minutes, I want to share with you a recording, something that I just recorded with my phone of uh, some Cuban folks there uh, just uh, worshiping the Lord. And uh, it's a blessing every time I watch this video. The first time I ever walked into a church service in Havana, I walked into the service. It was already in progress. This is what I walked into. And I just clicked the phone there and just started recording. And so hopefully it'll be a blessing. You're listening to TBR Radio Presents The Dixie Heritage Show. Santo, 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 Santo. 
with our good friend Clint Lacey. So your newest project is you've started a publishing company, Foothills Media, and uh, you'll be publishing uh, three tremendous books. Uh, the first of those is your book, The Beginner's Guide to False Flags. Why don't you tell us just a little bit about that book? If you were wondering how we ended up at this point in our history and everything that's going on, Beginner's Guide to False Flags takes you from the beginning of the country until uh, the election of Donald Trump, Charlottesville, the rise of the communists, and the Russian collusion hoax, the rape of Delaware County, the story in which a United States veteran uh, defended himself against a known uh, drug felon, only to find out that the local police were in on it. Crooked prosecutors, and one of those prosecutors was actually arrested coming back from uh, an island in the Caribbean in a murder for hire plot. And it just details uh, just how corrupt one small county can be. And in the book, I said that Delaware County, Oklahoma in the past was a safe haven for uh, outlaws from Missouri and Arkansas. And what the reader will find out, it still is. Blood in the Ozarks, expanded second edition, 156 year old government cover, cover up in which out of control a union officer led his men to uh, murder men, women, and children at a Christmas gathering in the Missouri Ozark. I found it Foothills Media in uh, 2019 because I'm dedicated to bringing you the truth. Thank you, Clint. I know that our listeners are going to want to check out Foothills Media, so tell them how they can do so. Well, you can visit us at foothillsmedia.net, and that will take you to our website where you can uh, browse the books, read our blog posts, and uh, uh, catch up on news that you won't find anywhere else in the mainstream media. Foothillsmedia.net. We're now out of time for this week's TBR Radio Presents the Dixie Heritage Show. Go to our website, www.dixieheritage.net, www.dixieheritage.net, and find out how you can become a subscriber to the Dixie Heritage Newsletter, the weekly Dixie Heritage Newsletter. And when you do, I'll send you a copy of my book, The Truth About the Confederate Battle Flag. You'll receive both resources, the newsletter and the book, absolutely free of charge, no cost, no obligation. We're happy to put those in your hand each and every week. We will be back again, same time, same place next week. We'll have another great show for you. Until then, from everybody here at TBR Radio, God bless.